Hi everyone, now Julian here. Welcome to another episode of Take the Rose Garage and hello to 2018. Yep, this is my first video of the new year. Hope you guys had a great new year and Merry Christmas to you. And hope you all got lots of cool classic car stuff over the holidays. And now that I've got a new year ahead, it means I can get cracking on my Alpha Spider and sorting out some of the jobs that I've been talking about for ages. And that is the knackered electric fan that's attached to the radiator. Now, in order to get rid of that ridiculous fan, I need to take the radiator out. Now, if I'm gonna do that, I might as well flush the whole cooling system. And the coolant in this car really needs to be changed. So basically what I need to do is flush the radiator, disconnect all the hoses, and remove the expansion tank over here. Then that will give me enough access to get the radiator out of the car. And while that's out, I can also look at remounting the engine fan because obviously if I completely remove the electric fan this car won't have any cooling fan attached at all so I've got a replacement engine fan I will stick that on the car and then put it back to how it left the factory now the engine in my spider is aluminium it's got an aluminium block and head so that means you need to be careful choosing the right coolant now the coolant I've got for this one is a blue grade and is rated to work with aluminium engines and I checked with the guys at Classic Alpha and they said yeah that particular one will work absolutely fine also the coolant capacity for this car is 11 litres so I've got 5 litres of coolant and I've got 5 litres plus plenty more of distilled water because what I'm going to do with this radio I'm not going to just put ordinary water in which you know you can actually do that you can use ordinary tap water but I'm going to put in distilled water just to make sure it's nice and clean. Now the radiator in the Spider has got two holes. There's one at the top here which goes into the um, thermostat and then there's another one directly underneath right at the bottom. So the first thing to do, attack that hose down the bottom and get this horrible coolant out of this car. Well that was a little bit fiddly to say the least. The clamp was actually orientated in the correct way because I, I thought I should be able to just access it from the top but you can actually get through under here. Uh, there's a nice gap where you can fit a long screwdriver through and get access to the clamp screw head and I was able to undo that. The issue then was to actually get the hose off because obviously that's been clamped on very tight for a long time. Pulling the hose off was a pain and I resorted to actually using this which is an exhaust hanger tool and I was able to use that to get down in and around the end of the rubber hose and just gently pry it all the way around get it unstuck and eventually after about a good 15 minutes of <sighs> rooting away got it loose so now the coolant is draining out now it's easier to forget when you're draining the coolant on an Alpha Spider that there is actually another spot you need to drain as well and that's the engine plug which is located underneath the manifold just over here on the left hand side. Now it's down underneath the manifold and there's a bolt which you need to undo which drains the coolant that is actually in the engine itself because obviously all the water is in here but there's also water in the engine itself. So before you get carried away and think yeah I'm all done here you actually have to go and do the engine as well. So. Let's go do that too. Well, I never like to admit defeat, um, but sometimes parts on a car can be a massive pain, and unfortunately, that engine drain plug is a pig to get at. And no matter what I do to try and get the socket on and then get the ratchet attached because the space is really tight, I mean, the brake booster's in the way, it's a pain and I've been at it for the last 15 20 minutes trying to get something on to get a grab on it and it just won't hold so unfortunately I can't get the drain plug open and if anybody else has got any advice on how to actually get around this do let me know I can also clean up the expansion tank because the expansion tank is absolutely filthy we have got it here you can see how 
cruddy this is on the inside. The trick with this is to use crushed ice. So I'm gonna put some crushed ice in here, give it a good shake and that'll clean it up on the inside and make it look a lot better than it does at the moment. And I finished running tap water through the radiator and uh, basically it ran it until it came out nice and clear. So what I've done is reconnect all the hoses, tighten them back up, not too tight because obviously you'd have to come off again. And I've put in distilled water and radiator flush and now I need to run the car for 10 minutes with the heater open. And that's an important tip. If you don't open the heater, it's not gonna go through the heater matrix and flush properly. So it's time to fire the car up and let it warm up for 10 minutes. With the engine running, we're going to leave it for 10 minutes, let it warm up, heater valve is open, let everything circulate through, then come back, switch it off, and leave it cool for about half an hour, 40 minutes, and then drain the coolant again. So the car has cooled down and I've drained the water out of the radiator again, uh, it wasn't too hot, so I didn't burn, scald myself. And so that's all of the cleaning solution, the rad flush and the distilled water flushed out of the rad now and I've run through a little bit more water again just to flush that solution out and I've disconnected the top holes and I've just undone the clasp here a bit just to twist it back a bit so there's enough room for the radiator to come out because it's pretty much ready to go now and yes I've employed a piece of wood just to push the bonnet back a little bit because in the standard position it's in a little bit too far so if you lift the radiator up there's a risk of it fouling against this. The radiator has two bolts at the top, left and right. The shroud, I mean, I could actually take that off, but I'm gonna leave it in situ and take it off when it's out of the car. So yeah, let's get this radiator out of the car. Now that the bolts are off, the radiator is free and ready to come up. Now when you lift, you have to just make sure you don't hit the fan belt area. Obviously mine hasn't got an engine fan so I don't need to keep that out of the way but at the same time just need to take it slowly and just watch for coolant that's still in the tank and there we go. Hooray, the electric fan is off. This thing is toast, it really is. The body of it is all worn and rusty and yeah. It looks old. I mean, the history file says something about an electric fan being put on in 2014. I don't think so. This definitely looks a lot older than that. So it actually wouldn't surprise me if this came off another car. But the good thing is I've got loads of free air now coming through, which is gonna hit the original engine fan, which I'm gonna put back on the car. Now I picked up a replacement engine fan from Classic Alpha because the one that came with the car, which is the original one that was fitted, clearly had an incident at some point and there's a couple of chunks missing out of it. So I've got a new fan that's going to go on the car right now and then I'll be ready to put the radiator back in. Getting there slowly but surely. And another step is done. Engine fan is installed. Very happy to have that back in place. And it certainly looks a lot better than the old fan that came with the car. Nice, shiny and clean, that's what I like. And bingo, the radiator is back in. Very happy to have this all reinstalled. Got all the pipes reconnected now, and last bit left for me to do is to go get the expansion tank, which I've left soaking for a good few hours to try and get all the grime out of it. So I'll reconnect that and then time to put some coolant back in the car. Now I've checked all the hoses, checked all the connections, double checked and triple checked because you know you really need to make sure that everything's buttoned up nice and tight because the last thing you want is for this stuff, which you know costs money, 
to come pouring out the bottom. So everything's all tightened up and I'm going to add the full five litres of this. Now I said earlier that the capacity is about 11 litres. I checked with a friend who has one of these and he said it's about actually 9.5. So putting in five of this and then the rest in the still water, it'll mean there'll be an extra bit of antifreeze in there and coolant, which doesn't do the car any harm at all. So let's put some stuff in. All the coolant is in the car. I put some in the expansion tank and I also put some in the radiator itself. I've put the still water in both just to mix it up. And now I need to run the car give it a go for about 10 minutes, let it warm up, leave the cap off so if there's any air in the system it can gurgle its way out and then it should be job done. And that's pretty much it for this episode of Take Your Own Garage. Hope you guys enjoyed my procedure for renewing the coolant in my car and for replacing the knackered electric fan with the original factory intended engine fan. I'm so happy to have that fan back on the car. You know that electric fan was a massive massive problem with this car. It was draining the battery, it wouldn't shut off, it was its Achilles heel. So now fingers crossed all go to plan, everything is working okay. So I'm very very happy to done this work on the car and especially at winter here it's the perfect time to sort out the cooling system um, and just to add as well just before I go I did a quick test with a coolant radiator pipette tester just to see what the coolant level was like and all the little balls in the tester went right up to the top which means the coolant protection in this car is spot on so that's it thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed this episode and in the next one I'm going to be doing an oil service on this car because it needs it and I also need to revisit the wiper because the wiper motor in this car needs to come out and be fixed. So yeah, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned and see you soon. And don't forget, just go drive. Adios.